Well, greetings. Here we are. And what is Christmas? What is it for Jews? I guess Jews are waiting for the Messiah. And so you could regard Christmas as important to them because it, even in Christianity, it's not the actual date of the birth of Jesus. It, it's a celebration of the birth of Jesus. So for Jews, perhaps it's the celebration of the birth of the Messiah yet to come. And for Muslims, Christ is important and he is called the Messiah, and he is, in Islam, the last of the great prophets before the prophet Muhammad, and quite and arguably one of the greatest of the prophets with a huge role at the resurrection. In Islam, nobody comes to the resurrection without coming by Jesus, who doesn't sleep. He's with God now in Islamic tradition. So Jesus is critically important, and Muslims respect this day as Eid Milad al Masih the birthday of the Messiah. And here we are. It's Christmas, and COVID is with us. My dear oldest son decided that it was impossible for him to come with his grandchildren to us for Christmas from Dubai. My youngest son decided to join us from London, and so did our daughter, Loveday. Loveday lives and works in Berlin, Germany. She decided to drive from Germany to the United Kingdom, hired a car to do so, and brought her little dog, Mishmish. Mishmish is Arabic for apricot, also Arabic for never, because the apricots never bloom. Phil Mishmish, they say. Would Loveday ever get here? Well, she did on Saturday last, uh, a week ago. She arrived in London, having driven virtually non-stop from Germany isolating all the way, staying in her car. I mean, remarkable achievement. And then she drove on down, collecting her brother, who'd been isolating for two weeks, and drove on down to Cornwall, where we are. She arrived, well, she, she left London on the, the evening of the Boris Johnson statement, announcing that Britain had a, a new ver version of the plague that was worse than anything that anybody had seen before. And so she actually drove through the night on that Saturday with her brother and arrived here having stopped on the way and slept early on the morning of that Sunday, last Sunday. And then the response came from France that they would be closing the border and there was an anticipation that the border would be closed in Germany. She had her little dog. She had to take her little dog back before Brexit. There was an ab anticipation that it would be a hard Brexit and therefore no deals for the transport of pets, or at least it would take time to put them in place in a no-deal Brexit. So dear Loveday spent three hours with us and then turned around and drove back to Germany, catching the last ferry to France with her little dog before the French closed the borders. Of course, they were subsequently, it seems, to reopen the borders and to... <laughs> and to <laughs> to negotiate a deal for Brexit, so it seems. But at that time, that was by no means clear. So there you go. Sadness is of a COVID world in which so many of us have had to make little sacrifices and big sacrifices. But there are pluses to it. In a post-COVID world, we shall travel less for both work and pleasure. It amuses me that they have just given permission to build a fourth runway at Heathrow Airport. I can't see it ever being built, or if it is, it's a complete white elephant and waste of money, because there will never be the demand of the same level of demand for travel, air travel. I mean, my son, who lives in Dubai, he will still travel for work around the Middle East and so on. He heads up the Middle East Division of an International Property Company. He laments the fact that his great trips to New York a half a dozen times a year to meet his principals in his property company won't take place anymore. Because why won't he be traveling to New York half a dozen times a year? Because of Zoom and Skype and all of this. The great conferences that they would have and that would have necessitated getting them together in New York can now be done on the Internet. Because we be come accustomed to doing these things. Yes, we will live in a world in which Baghdad is as close to London as Cornwall is in the virtual universe. And that has to be a good thing. On the downside, it's a more parochial world in which nationalisms are growing, whilst the elites remain more out of touch than ever with the population at large and fail to understand the worldwide mood of anti-establishmentarianism. And they put it down to populism and condemn it as such, misunderstanding it. I don't know what can be done about that. I mean, the southeast 
bubble is a new word, isn't it? It's entered our dictionary that will be there forever, the bubble. The Southeast bubble in the United Kingdom is out of touch with the rest of the nation. The Washington bubble in the United States is out of touch with the rest of the nation. In some sort of alter universe, our other place does not comprehend the frustrations of the nation at large, and that puts everything that doesn't fit with their perspective down as ignorance and prejudice. There's too little compassion, too little understanding, too little capacity amongst the elite, including the world's press, too little understanding of the mass of humanity and the way they think and their frustration. And we live in a world in which there are new great oppressors. This is another downside to it all. I mean, China, India, Turkey, step forward. These are nations that have become great oppressors. China, with its treatment of the Muslims, is incomprehensible. One million and more Muslims in concentration camps used as slave labor in the cotton fields and in industry. Slave labor in this year, 75 years after the Holocaust. China is a pariah state, and it's one of the permanent seats on the Security Council. I mean, atrocious. And then India, with its Hindu nationalist government and its behavior towards Kashmir is one element that we've seen of late. But much more disturbing is its behavior towards Muslims as a whole. I mean, you're talking about the, the second most populous Muslim nation in the world, after Indonesia. India has the second largest Muslim population. And they are being repressed and treated as second-class citizens by the Hindu nationalist government. What is this in this day and age, when we should all be placing an equal value on one another? I mean, this is incomprehensible that India should have become a repressive power, India of all nations, and then Turkey with its cruel adventurism in Syria, in Libya, in Eastern Europe, Turkey with its new hegemonic ambitions under Erdogan, the new ambitions to make a new Ottoman Empire, the extraordinary selfish cruelty of the government of Turkey. I mean, I suppose for some in Libya, Turkey is a savior. What price it has seized half of the territorial waters of Libya or made Libya surrender them in return for its aid, if you call it aid. Oh dear. China, India, and Turkey have become three of the cruelest, most selfish powers in the world today. And it's a world in which the big issues remain unresolved. Environmentalism is vastly important in an era of global warming. And we sanction Iran and Syria for their misdemeanors, but we do not sanction Bolsonaro of Brazil probably the greatest climate change offender in the universe as he burns down the Amazon. Now there's a populist president if you want one, a truly populist president. He is the most popular dictator, well, he's effectively a dictator isn't he, in South America in an era in which all the other elected dictators in South America are unpopular, Bolsonaro is popular with his people as he burns the Amazon to the ground. Extraordinary. But there are plus points. I'm encouraged, and I think much of the world is, by the election of Joe Biden as President of the United States of America because he cares about the environment. And I, I am encouraged by the idealism of the young. I'm encouraged by the idealism of the young. I am reminded that the smallest candle can push away the deepest dark. And I think it is important at this time of Christmas to recognize that the coronavirus pandemic does not come from the hand of God. All of creation is alive and all of creation has been given free will as emphasized in Islam, in the writings of the great Islamic philosopher Mullah Sadra and in Christianity, by the writings of St. Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Coronavirus was either produced in the Wuhan Institute of Virology or the Wuhan wet market. The jury is out, but it doesn't really matter. In either instance, the pandemic was man-manufactured. The plus is that this has halted or at least given pause to humanity's race to self-destruction. It is also given humanity an evolutionary leap forward in terms of human communication, a new visual communications web that is as transformative as the world wide web on which it is based. And this alone 
will be a factor in building peace on earth and an end to war. The road to a peaceful world is a long and difficult one to navigate, but for sure the march has begun. God bless you this Christmas. May 2021 be a far better year for us all.